So in this video, we're going to graph another polynomial in factored form, and we're going to follow the same six steps that we followed in the video previously, and I kept the template that we used as well for these six steps. So the polynomial that we have to graph is this negative 4x times 1 minus 3x times x plus 3 times 2x minus 5. So let's figure out what the degree of this polynomial is. So what we do is we take all these x values, so this x value here is in a bracket on its own, and we take all of the x values to the power of whatever each bracket is. So each of these brackets are to the power of one. So this x is to the power of one, this x here is to the power of one, this x is to the power of 1 as well, and then this x is to the power of 1. So notice how we just put the x's of the brackets. We don't put the leading coefficients that are in front of them because we're going to deal with the leading coefficients in step 2. So taking all these x to the power of 1, multiplying them 4 times, you would add the exponents because the bases are the same, so you would end up getting x to the power of 4. So we know that the degree of this polynomial function is 4. Step 2, leading coefficient. What we do is we take the number that's in front, so that would be the negative 4, and then we take the leading coefficient of each bracket and then take it to the power of whatever that bracket is to the power of. So this first bracket here, notice how there's like this one in front of the x because the x is by itself. So it would be one to the power of one. Here, the leading coefficient, if we rewrite this bracket, we could rewrite it as negative three x plus one. The leading coefficient is this negative three and that's to the power of one. So we would have negative three to the power of one this leading coefficient here is 1, so it would be 1 to the power of 1. And the leading coefficient in this bracket is the 2, and the 2 is to the power of 1. So taking all these and multiplying them out, negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12, times 2 is 24. So we know that the leading coefficient of this polynomial is going to be 24. Now moving on to step 3, it depends on steps 1 and 2. So we have to find the end behavior and if you look back to the chart that we did on end behavior in the video, it depends on the degree and the leading coefficient. So since our degree is 4 and it's even, and our leading coefficient is 24, which is positive. An even degree of positive leading coefficient means that the end behavior is from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. So that's step 3. That is the end behavior right there. Step 4, y-intercept. So we plug in 0 for all the x's. So we'd have y equals negative 4, and then this um, bracket goes to 0 because it's the x by itself, so plugging in 0 for x here, we have 0 in the bracket. Plugging in 0 in this bracket, we'd have 1 minus 0, so that would just be 1 there. Plugging in 0 in this bracket, we'd just be left with 0 plus 3, so that would be a 3 in the bracket. And then plugging in a 0 here, we'd just be left with the negative 5. So taking all of these, multiplying them out, the zero makes the whole thing zero, so we know the y-intercept is equal to zero. Moving on to step five, we have to find the x-intercepts, and we do that by plugging in zero for y and making it equal to the whole polynomial function. And then what we do is we find out when does each bracket equal zero, including this x here, which is in a bracket. So that bracket's going to equal 0 well, when x is equal to 0, so we know that that's one of the y-intercepts. And that makes sense because since the y-intercept was 0 here, we know that the polynomial function will go through the origin. Next, when does 1 minus 3x equal 0? Well, when we isolate for x, bring the negative 3x over, 1 minus 3x would equal 0 when x is equal to 1 over 3. 
When does x plus 3 equal 0? Well, when x is equal to negative 3, bringing the positive 3 over. When does 2x minus 5 equal 0? Well, when 2x is equal to 5. So when x is equal to 5 over 2. So those are our four x-intercepts, 0, 1 over 3, negative 3, and 5 over 2. Moving on to step 6, we have to graph it. And to graph it, all we need is parts 3, 4, and 5. As I mentioned in the video before, parts 1 and 2 were more so used to find what the end behavior would be in part 3. So let's label the x-intercepts first. So let's label them in order from left to right. So first comes negative 3. So let's put that here. Then would be 0 at the origin, and that's the y-intercept as well. Then next would be 1 over 3. So let's put that over here. And then 5 over 2, which is the same as 2.5, let's put out here. Now this is not necessarily to scale, but uh, just making sure that you have the correct intercept labels, you should be fine. End behavior from quadrant two to quadrant one. So we know that this polynomial function is gonna start over here and it's gonna end over here. So now drawing something like this, we end up getting a polynomial function that has n behaviors from quadrant two to quadrant one, and it goes through the x-intercepts of negative three, zero, one over three, and five over two. So if you took this polynomial function here, graphed it in a graphing calculator, or maybe decimals online, you would end up getting this sort of graph. Now in the next video, what I'm gonna go over is graphing a polynomial function but when the brackets are to the power of something other than one. So let's say that this one minus three x was to the power of two, or this x plus three was to the power of five, and so forth and so forth. And what happens is that these powers, or they're called orders, quote unquote, they affect the graph in a unique way. But uh, we'll go over that in more detail in the next video.